Welcome to Toy Mat. On my channel, I compare vintage toys with their modern reproductions or counterparts. Today, I'm taking a look at the solo movie Kessel Run Millennium Falcon. Since this is from the solo movie, I figured it would be okay to look at this toy solo. Also, I don't have the vintage Falcon to prepare it with. So, this was released in conjunction with the solo movie. Uh, it was kind of important since the Falcon was a major part of the film. Uh, the ship came with a Han Solo action figure, a hyperfuel canister, and Han came equipped with his trusty DL-44 blaster that can fit into his leg holster. Overall, it's kind of a, just a boring Han Solo action figure. Uh, it's him in a black shirt. Uh, nothing too iconic from either the, the film or, you know, historical Han Solo. So we'll put Han over here for now. So now, let's take a look at the Falcon's features. It has an opening cockpit. It has the mandible escape pod, which opens up, and you can fit a figure in here. Also, this green icon means it's compatible with the Force Lint 2.0. Wow. It has two opening compartments in the rear. Here and here. This one, you can store the hyperfuel canister in. And then now, we're going to go on to the big selling points of this, the lights and sounds. So the lights and sounds are controlled by a three position switch on the bottom of the ship, here. Position zero is lights and sounds off. Position one does not have the vibration and explosion features. And position two is the whole shebang. This button over here on the port side controls the firing weapon sounds. The landing gear on the bottom, when released, will start off the flight sounds. So we have the Falcon taking off now. And then as you maneuver the toy, it's got maneuvering jet sounds. And the most exciting part, the damage features. You go into hyperspace, and then all of a sudden, uh-oh. Trouble. Got, got a bumpy ride. Alarms, danger, danger. Ah! And then hyperspace to safety. So we'll turn these off for now. So as you saw, there are some exploding sections on the ship, um, and it reveals the more original trilogy, sequel trilogy style um, William Falcon surface area. So this toy retailed for $100. I was able to purchase it on clearance for around $50. Uh, comparing that to the original William Falcon, I was able to find the Christmas 1980 um, prices. It was about $40 back then. And that, uh, with inflation, comes to around $120 today. So overall, is this a good toy? Well, the playability of the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon comes down to its bells and whistles, literally. The main play features of this are the lights, sounds, and explosion features. Um, the opening compartments on the rear cannot accommodate a standing or even a sitting action figure. Um, and on the box, it is labeled as storage areas. The cockpit only has seating for one action figure, even though there are two control yokes in there. What is the Millennium Falcon without its code pilot? Where is Chewie's seat on this thing? The original could fit two action figures in the cockpit. In the rear, it had a rotating laser cannon with a seat for an action figure. Here, it had a ramp that would go up into the main body of the Falcon. It had the training droid. It had a smuggling compartment, 
it had the chess table. There were so many more features on the original that are not in this one. It even had primitive whirring sound effects. I think it was billed as an alarm sound. So overall, I think the playability of this toy is really limited. So, I'm not a toy designer. I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel. But here's how I would have redesigned this thing. First, remove all the electronics and vibration features. Um, use the savings from that to make this thing bigger. Put more plastic into this. Okay. Give room for a second person in the cockpit. Um, expand the, the rear section um, so that you can have an actual rotating turret with a chair so that you can have more space for the smuggling compartment where they hid the hyperfuel. Have the common area of the Millennium Falcon, um, again, for the solo movie with Lando's design. Have the an area for the actual hyperdrive compartment of the Millennium Falcon. I think that would have been a, a vast improvement, even with all the lights and sounds removed. Shoot, you could have made this thing force lead compatible um, and not had all the internal electronics. So what are your thoughts? Do you think there's still a market for large toys or play sets like the Falcon? Um, and are there any toys that you'd like to see me compare? If so, mention it in the comments below. And please join us next time when I take two toys and have them take it to the toy mat.